Uh, so in this modern day of technology, there's a whole bunch of people online that are watching this. So I want to say hello to all those people out there, and uh, hello to everybody. Welcome to New York. Big day for us. Really, really big day. Um, so I didn't even know where to start. So we're really excited. It's like being pregnant for almost 24 months. <laughs> so it's, it's huge that we're here today. We're coming off a wonderful feeling. The energy is high in New York. I mean, Chrysler sales up 34 percent. Uh, best first quarter since 2008. So really, the company is on a high. So yes. So timing is good. So I want to talk a little bit about about what SRT is all about. So obviously, our contribution to the bottom line of Chrysler is roughly 20,000 units per year. So it's obviously an object of passion. But what's cool about SRT is that we bring a lot of people that otherwise wouldn't have considered our brands at all coming into the brand through our products. So we're very excited that we're able to offer that kind of antenna, that funnel, into the, the group's uh, dealerships and showrooms. But what we're realizing is that you know, we're starting to see, especially the Grand Cherokee SRT, we're seeing customers we've never seen before. People from different brands turning in some pretty nice products and taking a try, and they love, they're loving what they're getting. So we're going to continue that trend. Uh, the exterior of the car, we've used, you know, the Viper's always been a place to experiment with technology. So for the first time, we used super formed aluminum on the sills and the doors. You cannot normally get those draws with regular stamping. This is a heated process, allowing us some amazing forms. And we've also learned from racing carbon fiber. The body is mostly carbon fiber, the hood, the roof, the deck. What's that done for us? It's taken a lot of weight out of the car. So overall, uh, the car is, uh, wait a minute, this one slide is, there it is. 32% lighter just in the body alone, and you can see the percentages up there. So a lot of focus on weight savings. Next. The owners told us, if you don't put a clamshell hood on this car, we're not going to talk to you anymore, right? So we brought back the clamshell hood, and the under hood is beautiful. We really spent a lot of time working on it. The designers were actually working with the engineers to make the under hood beautiful, because that's why. Power. So we upped the horsepower by 40 horsepower, even though the engine's lighter and more efficient. We have composite intake manifold, which flows a lot better. Total 640 horsepower. But everybody who's driven a Viper knows it's all about torque. So the torque is up considerably, another 40 pounds. But look at the curve, how early the torque comes on. So this car makes more torque at idle than most, mar most cars make at full RPM. And the Viper is now the, the highest torque output vehicle of any naturally aspirated engine in the world. This thing is a torque monster, right? So of course, power is nothing without control, if I should borrow something from our friends. <laughs> uh, one thing I want to talk about um, the vehicle got a lot lighter, so roughly 100 pounds, actually exactly 100 pounds lighter than the outgoing model. So I do a little math. We also have added something called the track pack, taking another 57 pounds out of the vehicle for a possible curb weight of 32.97. So it's the lightest Viper ever. So you combine that, there you go, you combine that with the horsepower, we end up with a 5.15 pounds per horsepower. Now some of our friends in the supercar world calculate horsepower to ratio a little differently, so we actually went and used what a lot of our European friends use called dry weight. And if you calculate dry weight, we're at 4.9 pounds per horsepower. And look at where that puts the Viper. We are third only to some of the fastest cars in the world, of course. The Ferrari had to be faster, we understand that. <laughs> but we're ahead of the Lamborghini and, and our friends Corvette and even the Porsche, so the Viper is truly one of the fastest cars in the world. So one of the challenges of all that power is controlling it. You know, and this is probably what the Viper is known for, is this, right? So a lot of, it's, it's really easy to make smoke with the Viper. So what, what all this new technology has added, we've been able to add launch control to the Viper. So the first time ever, Viper will have launch control. You push the button, floor the gas, lift the clutch, it does the rest. So you can have repeatable, absolute zero to 60 times. And if you notice, stability control is there. So if you want to switch it off, you can. We'll talk about that in a bit and we've added cruise control. The Viper owners have finally said it's okay to add cruise control. We've been having this fight for almost 15 years. So we have cruise control damage. Is that okay? Get over yourselves. <laughs> the other thing about this company, we're pretty resourceful, right? So this car shares a few parts. The Dodge Dart cluster was, was exercised. That's gonna be, it's in the Viper, but it's configured especially for the Viper. So you can control all kinds of amazing things with this thing. So you see that beautiful steering wheel, nice chunky steering wheel. So if you don't like launch control and stability control and you're a hardcore kind of person, you just flip the switch, you can disable all that stuff. We have multi-mode, four stages of stability control for that person who really wants to just play like the hardcore guy likes to play, all right? 
So there's traction control, there's uh, rate, optimi uh, rate optimization. We also have something new for the Viper, and that is adjustable suspension. On the GTS model, we have two mode adjustable suspension. Again, all fingertip controlled and also uh, push button on the dash. Uh, this thing is incredible, so I'm just going to show you a few things it can do. In most cars have shift lights, we have a shift snake. You know, so the whole thing turns red when you're, uh, you're beating that car a little too much, right? So, so look at all it can do. Pay attention to the screen, it's just incredible. So I didn't want to go through all of it, but you can see the screen, really a 7-inch TFT screen, opens up all kinds of possibilities. So you take that, you take the corporation's best infotainment technology, and we have it in the center stack of the vehicle, a lot of great things we can do. Again, custom made for the Viper. Now, I'd like to call the interior of the new Viper the Executive Performance Driver's Office. We really took everything that we learned in the last three to four years about interiors and put it in this car. The fit and finish, quality, attention to detail, the, the, the wrapping, everything you touch on the vehicles. Our staff really went nuts. Hats off to Klaus Busse's team and Tomei. Really, really sweat the details. If you look at the vehicle, we learned a lot. You know, they hurt our feelings when we talked to some of the owners of other cars and said, we want you guys to step it up. And I think we did. So I hope you'll agree when you finally see the car. There is not, we didn't leave any stone unturned when it comes to interior quality. And one of my favorite things of the car, and one of the parts we actually did share with Ferrari, is the seat. The seat comes from Sawbelt, the same supplier as Ferrari, that allowed us to increase interior space by 90 millimeters. So now a guy who's six foot five, six foot seven, can comfortably get in the car and drive. That was one of the biggest complaints of the Viper, right? The other thing we've done is, is the big trend in this world now is customization. Uh, the Viper interior can be had in a multitude of ways. So if you look at the screen, you'll see, uh, and this is just the beginning, right? But just to show you how it can be had uh, any way you want. Again, with these wrapped materials, we can change the vehicle. So we have a premium leather package, you'll see, all there. It'll be on display tomorrow at the auto show. A lot of great ways that you can have the car truly making it custom. And I love this money shot. Okay, brace yourselves. This is my favorite slide of the whole thing. Look at that. I mean, who would have thunk it, right? <laughs> to be known as a bit of a kid car, as a bit of a joke in the supercar community. Now we want people to get in the car and just make excuses to drive somewhere. <laughs> so, I want to talk, you know, now it's time to kind of get to the brass tacks here. And I'll never forget the day we approved this program. And Sergio's a pragmatic guy. In our management team, we really think about things deeply. Uh, but I'll never forget when he talked to the dealer community a few years ago so now. Uh, he talked to the dealer body, and he couldn't wait to show them the Viper.
Um, styling the Viper has been a fun project. Of course, we were doing 19 vehicles during this time, so it wasn't exactly the priority, but it wasn't too hard to find some designers to find a little extra time to style this vehicle. And you can see the inspiration came from the snake and the human body. So we really spent a lot of time. If you look at the vehicle, it's got a lot of beautiful details. And for the first time, the Viper will be launched with two models. As you know, we have a very, very focused community that likes the hardcore Viper. So we'll offer it in the SRT GTS version, which will be the kind of power seats, premium audio, all leather interior, and also a version called the SRT Viper. A little more flamboyant on the outside with a very dedicated hood, a little uh, back to basics approach. So there'll be, we'll be more information on that in the future, but very a way to take care of the spectrum of owners that we have. Um, the, the front end, I hope you notice right away, it's a Viper, right? But it has this new stair, a lot of technology, the headlamps, the LED headlamps, uh, really give it a look, literally styled around the eyes of a snake. I'll just show you some pictures, we've got to hurry up on time here, but beautiful lines, the plan view. You can see the, the, the care and love and attention went to this vehicle. And uh, I can't tell you how many post-it notes I left on the clay. We really <laughs> made the lives quite hard of our designers, but I think they had a really good time working on this project. So I'll just go through this and show you the details. So we really had a lot of fun on this. So next, I want to talk about the fact that the car, I know there's a, a team at Connor right now watching this, so hats off to you that the Connor Assembly has been, con thank you. Connor Assembly is, is back in business. Here's a plant that was shut down for almost two years. The, the workers that will be assembling the Viper are actually reconditioning the plant. So Wolf Cast Manufacturing has come to Connor Assembly, so hats off to you. So I want to talk about the R in street racing technology, and that's racing. So we've always loved racing, and it's in our blood, it's in our name, right? So we've been, uh, you know, as you know, we have quite a storied past in this world. We we have a lot of championships with Viper, uh, many world titles, as you can see over there. So we approached a company uh, called uh, Microsoft that owns Forza Video Games. So if we can't afford to go racing for real, at least we can do it virtually. So the car will debut also in the Forza video game, so a lot of people can drive the car virtually. So there it is. So I want to they're the first company to take a test drive of the Viper. I want to show you the video they put together. Check it out. Thank you, everybody. Please hold for just a moment for press photography. 